Matthew chapter 4. Uh, Paul touched on this a little bit this morning. I thought he was going to um, steal my thunder. But um, he, he talked a little bit about the temptation of Jesus, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, tonight. But before we do, I wanted to read a few statements out of the mouths of children. They were asked questions, and their answers are printed on this piece of paper. He said, One horsepower is the amount of energy it takes to drag a horse 500 feet in one second. I don't think that's accurate. <clears throat> you can listen to thunder after lightning and tell how close you came. The law of gravity says, No fair jumping up without coming down. When they broke open molecules, they found they were only stuffed with atoms. But when they broke open atoms, they found them stuffed with explosions. When people run around and around in circles, we say they're crazy. When planets do it, we say they're orbiting. Rainbows are just to look at, not really to understand. While the earth seems to be knowingly keeping its distance from the sun, it is really only centrifugating. <laughs> Someday we may discover how to make magnets that can point in any direction. <clears throat> South America has cold summers and hot winters, but somehow they still manage. Most books now say our sun is a star but it still knows how to change back into a sun in the daytime. Oh. Water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. There are 180 degrees between freezing and boiling because there are 180 degrees between north and south. <clears throat> A vibration is a motion that cannot make up its mind which way it wants to go. There's 26 vitamins in all, but some of the letters are yet to be discovered. Finding them all means living forever. There's a tremendous weight pushing down on the center of the earth because of so much population stomping around up there these days. Many dead animals in the past changed to fossils while others preferred to be oil. <laughs> Genetics explain why you look like your father and if you don't, why you should. <laughs> Vacuums are nothings. We only mention them to let them know they're there. <clears throat> It's amazing what goes on in kids' minds. You know that? <clears throat> Some oxygen molecules help fires burn while others help make water. So sometimes it's brother against brother. <laughs> Some people can tell what time it is by looking at the sun, but I've never been able to make out the numbers. <clears throat> we say the cause of perfume is disappearing. We say the cause of perfume disappearing is evaporation. Evaporation gets blamed for a lot of things people forget to put the top on. <laughs> to most people, solutions mean finding the answers. But to chemists, solutions are things that are still all mixed up. I'm looking at a drop of water under a microscope, and we find there are twice as many H's as O's. <clears throat> Clouds are high-flying fogs. I don't know if you ever thought about it, but clouds weigh hundreds and hundreds, thousands of tons. And they just float up there. Right? Yeah. I'm not sure how clouds get formed, but the clouds know how to do it, and that's the important thing. <laughs> clouds just keep circling the earth around and around and around because there's just not much else to do. Water vapor gets together in a cloud 
And when it's big enough to be called a drop, it does. <laughs> kids. How old were they? It didn't say how old they were. Yeah. It's on. Yes, sir. So tonight we're going to be in Matthew chapter 4. We're talking about temptations. Any of you ever struggle with that? Yeah. <clears throat> Temptation is that thing that no one is exempt from. Dealing with it varies from person to person. Some people fail regularly. I'm one of those. And some are victorious often. What's the difference? Jesus being our example showed us how to do it here in Matthew chapter 4. We're going to read verses 4 or verses 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus saith, then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word and and the fact that it's powerful. It's alive. It's for us. And we thank You for giving us a copy of it. Lord, help us to to treasure Your Word. Father, help us to read it and study it, to memorize it and hide it in our hearts. Lord, help us to recognize the true value of it. And then, Father, I pray that tonight You would help us to see and understand what You have for us and put it into action in our lives because we are tempted on a regular basis. And we need Your help. We thank You for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is a power-packed section of Scripture. Um, We could spend a lot of time here on it. We're not going to or else I'll get accused of the same thing that Brother Tommy is accused of on a regular basis, and that is being long-winded. <clears throat> so we're just going to hit on some high points. And First of all, we notice here that not only did God know about the temptation of Jesus, He led Him to it. Mm-hmm. That's what it says in verse 1. Yeah. Then was Jesus led up into the wilderness of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's God. And, by the way, this happened after He had fasted for 40 days. Now, how many of you have gone without food for 40 days? I haven't. I've done it for, I think, seven or maybe ten at one point, maybe a couple of times. That's hard. I've never done 40 days. I don't know that I could. Jesus did. By the way, there's several other people in the Bible that have, and by the way, there's thousands of people that are still doing it today that will fast for 40 days. If you ever wonder why they do that, they do that many times because of spiritual reasons and sometimes because of health reasons. And it benefits both. Jesus did it. 
um, in the beginning of his ministry. And it doesn't say why he did it. It just says that he did it. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that he did it right before this major temptation of Satan himself. Not his demons, but Satan himself. He right. took this one on himself. That's right. Mm. Now, I believe that Jesus knew that it was coming. And he was preparing for it. Something about fasting and praying that prepares us for whatever it is that we are fasting and praying about. Mm -hmm. And many good. times it prepares us for things that we're not even aware of. Yeah, that's good. That are coming. So if you've not done fasting and praying, I suggest that you do. It's good for us. Mm. Um, one of the things that it helps us with is saying, simply saying no to ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's important to say no to ourselves. And one of the strongest pulls of our life is the desire for food. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. God put it there to keep us from starving to death. Okay? But a lot of times we, we indulge in that area and that's not good for us. Right. So it's good for us to say no. And it, <clears throat> it's interesting how that Jesus practiced saying no to Himself over and over and over and over for 40 days knowing that He's fixing to have to say no to the great tempter. Mm, that's good, Bruce. Amen. If we can't say no to a hamburger, it's not likely we're going to say no to a, the temptation to sin. Mm. Good, right. Think about that. Yeah. Jesus was getting prepared. God's going to not just allow us to be tempted, but sometimes will lead us to it, okay? But that's not anything to have fear of. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. God gave us a promise here. He said in verse 13, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 10.13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. In other words, everybody struggles with this. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, or allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. <clears throat> so for us to say, the devil made me do it, mm -hmm. as though... I had no control. Mm. Or to say, well, I just couldn't help myself. The temptation was too great. That's not true. Mm -mm. The problem is that that way of escape that God gave us, we opted out of it. That's the problem. Then after we passed over that safety that God gave us against that temptation, then it was beyond our control. Mm. Prior to that, when we had the choice, we walked away from that choice. Wow. <clears throat> so He does provide a way of escape. The very next verse says to flee, flee from idolatry. Mm -hmm. God gives us a path to run down but we have to make the choice to run. Amen. But many times we don't want to run. We want to indulge in the temptation. <clears throat> How can I fight temptation and win? That's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. In this area of fighting temptation, strength is vital. Mm. Spiritual strength. Yeah. If you go into a fight <clears throat> with someone when you're weak or sick, chances are you're going down. Mm -hmm. um, I know that in, in boxing, they prepare for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. ahead of time. Right. They work out in specific ways to exercise and strengthen certain muscles. They eat a certain diet for a certain period of time. 
uh, the week prior to, they do a whole lot of, of things that they normally wouldn't do just to get prepared mm -hmm. for the fight so that they can win. They don't get up off the couch after eating pizza and Coke and they're going to put on their, their boxing shorts and their gloves and then go to the, the boxing ring. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. They would certainly fail right there. Amen. So that's what we do. That's what we do. Mm. We roll out of the bed, sling on some clothes, jump in the car and run out the door and as though we didn't need to put on our armor. Mm. And then we wonder why we lose the battle. Mm. <clears throat> Fighting temptation without strength is asking for it. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Proverbs 24, 5 says... A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. <clears throat> so where do you acquire wisdom? From God. From His Word. Right. Proverbs 14.26 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and His children shall have a place of refuge. Mm -hmm. So how do I increase my fear of God? I want some input right here. So wake up, raise your hand, and answer the question. How do I increase my fear of God? He's watching. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. I tell you what, if we could... Memorize that one, or maybe maybe write it down on a piece of paper and tape it to the dash of our truck or car. <clears throat> Put it on a on a little reminder app on your phone to go off once every hour. Yeah. It'd probably change some of the things that we do or don't do. Brother Tommy, over. I'm searching scriptures where you can see where he demonstrated his pleasure, or anger, or his power. That's the best way to develop. It. True. Yeah. Corey? Not falling into the trap of this new age Christianity where God is just love. He doesn't judge you. He accepts everybody. And that's really popular nowadays. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. Stay away from those people and that teaching. Stay away from them. That's right. Run. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, tired of the whipping. Tired of the whipping. Um, I want to give you an analogy on this because it always has helped me, Jeanette. I was going to say get the dummy man. Yeah. Like, I, I have a um, respect for people that are otherwise because I know him. So people that don't know him wouldn't have a fear. Right. So if there's things that Jeanette still doesn't want Brother Oates to know because she's afraid she might get a whipping. <laughs> that she did when she was a kid at home. Is that true for you, Brenda? Yeah, see. But but if you walk down the street here and ask John Doe, are you afraid of Joe Otis Whitehead? Who's he? He has no fear of Otis Whitehead. If Brother Otis walked up to the man, he wouldn't have any fear of him. Right. What's the difference? She knows him. Yeah. He doesn't. Well, Phil? That verse references Proverbs 15, uh, 16. It says, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble. And that's right. Yeah. And that's true. That's right. So how do we increase the fear of our fear of God? Get to know Him. Right. How do you get to know Him? You read His Word. God described Himself. Yeah. Right here. And only here. True. So this is the only place we're going to see God's a picture of, yeah, of who He is. So in order to increase the fear of God, we've got to get to know Him. We've got to study His Word. 
we've got to recognize and remind ourselves regularly that the eyes of the Lord are watching. <clears throat> Galatians 6 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Remember, we're talking about temptation. How do I gain strength to fight temptation? If you're like me, you have temptation on a daily basis. And if you're like me, you probably fall prey to it sometimes. And you don't like it. By the way, God don't like it either. Amen. So if you don't like it, and you know He don't like it, well then we want to get some information on what we can do to fight the temptation. We all have different temptations. But to be able to fight these temptations and win. Right? right. So Galatians is saying, He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Or in other words, if we sow to our flesh, we're going to be a loser to the temptation. So how do we sow to our flesh? This is another place where we want some um, uh, input. How do I sow to my flesh? How do I add? How do I increase? How do I work on strengthening the flesh? Just giving in carnal desires. Giving in? Say, just I got a hand up. It's because I got my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> giving in to, to fleshly desires. The temptation does come in a systematic way, doesn't it? From the same places, at the same time, the same way, over and over and over. So if we continue to put ourselves there to see it or hear it, it's going to keep flowing in. like most men and I have a problem with looking at a woman that ain't dressed properly and I have thoughts I shouldn't have. Okay? Confession right here. So therefore, for me to go to the beach right. in July at 12 o'clock in the afternoon right. is putting myself in a position where I know without a doubt that I'm going to be tempted to sin. Right? Right? Right. And there are so many scriptures throughout the Bible that says, run, flee, get away from, don't spend time here, avoid, pass by it, go around it, dig a hole and crawl under it, whatever, but don't go there. Don't, don't go there. So, <clears throat> is it okay for me to go to the beach in the summertime? No. No, it isn't. It isn't. It's just not. And that's just one example of many. We could talk about music. We could talk about anger issues. And then we can talk about watching the news. And those two things go together. <laughs> Facebook. I, I have a tendency sometimes of watching something on TV and all of a sudden I forget what day it is, what time it is, I forget who I am because I'm just glued to that. <clears throat> So therefore, I just don't watch much of it. Because that's a weakness that I have. It just pulls me in. <clears throat> so whatever your temptations are, just figure it out. Okay, well if I don't go here, if I don't enter into this type of a conversation with this person, then I probably won't get aggravated or mad and say the things that I keep saying over and over and over. If I won't turn the radio on to that station, I won't be tempted to think about those things. <clears throat> but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So how do I sow to the Spirit? This is the other side of the spectrum. 
How do I sow to the Spirit? You got to recognize your Moses. Yeah. He said, put it on the doorposts. Yeah. 
Why? Because when you leave your house, you don't climb out the windows. <laughs> you walk through the door and you see it every time you leave the house. He also said put it on your gate post. Why? Because you're not going to hurdle the fence when you leave the yard. You're going to walk through the gate. And when you walk through the gate, you're going to see it right there. What's he saying? Put it places that you can see it on a regular basis. That's what he's saying. Okay? <clears throat> One of God's ways of escape is to do targeted Bible study. Mm-hmm. Then post the Scriptures in a conspicuous place. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I've got a problem remembering things. And uniquely, I forget the things that I'm supposed to, and I remember the things that I'm not. <laughs> Are you that way? So I have to try harder to remember the things that I'm supposed to remember. I don't have to try hard to remember the things that I'm not supposed to remember. That happens like clockwork. But, and the, here's the reason. Because the devil keeps sliding it up there. He's got a big stack of sticky notes that he keeps putting all over our doorposts and our gateposts. And the only way we're going to fight that battle is to put on put up our own sticky notes yeah. That's good, with Scripture on them. Yes, ma'am? That's exactly, exactly correct because when I said profession has nothing <coughs> to do with it, if you're reading that, you're agreeing with God. And that is key. That is the key. First admitting your thought, your thinking pattern is wrong. Mm-hmm. And when you read the Scripture now, Which is what God's Word is supposed to do. It's supposed to show us where our sin is and, and that what I've been doing or thinking or whatever isn't correct. And this is what God wants me to do now. Change. Right. Change. Change your profession. The word Jesus used was repent. Exactly. Yeah. Change our mind from what we were thinking to what He said. Amen. Then do it. And because we're forgetful, and Solomon talked about this a lot in Proverbs. Forget it not. He said that probably a dozen times. Yeah. Forget it not. Exactly. <laughs> Why? Because we forget. We do. So what's your problem? What's your weakness? Mm-hmm. What is the area you fail in regularly? Do a targeted Bible study. Write down those scriptures and get some tape and tape it to the... Let to the horn on your steering wheel yeah. or on the dash or or something. Um, I used to write, think Jenny still does this, write stuff on your hand because you're going to look at it a whole bunch of times before it finally wears off or you wash it off on accident. Why? So that we can remember. Amen. We're trying to fight temptation and win here. And, and these are just things that, that God's Word has given us to do in order to fight it and win. It's not God's fault when we have is, uh, ignored His way of escape mm-hmm. that we just read about in 1 Corinthians. That's right. Okay? God gives us a way of escape. Here it is. Yeah. Don't ignore it. When we do, we walk away from His way of escape. And now, it's just a matter of time. We're going to fall. We're going to get knocked down. We're going to get stabbed by the devil. Over and over and over. Because we keep avoiding God's way of escape. And it starts right here. Spending time with Him and His Word. Amen. Memorizing meditating on Scripture, singing it, talking about it to other people. Yeah. How often do we do that? <clears throat> Temptation is something that's not something we want to play with. Mm-hmm. Let's fight it and win. Amen.
Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word and how that You've guided us to a way that we can win in this fight against temptation. Lord, I thank You for the encouragement that You have given us tonight that we can win. But we have to follow the formula that You've given us. And Lord, that begins with learning Your Word, studying Your Word, learning more about You, drawing closer to You. Please help us to do that. Help us to become more victorious against temptation to sin. And we thank You. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Turn 488. 488.